Hi and welcome to Chino Does Stuff. On today's video, we're gonna be looking at form logic and implementing logic inside of your Power App. So this video is squarely aimed at someone who's just starting out with Power Apps and is really trying to work out the basics on how to get their Power App to do what they want it to do. Things are, are sort of done a little bit back to front with Power Apps, but um, once we dive in and we take a look, you'll see that it, the concept is really straightforward and um, really simple to implement. Let's stop talking about it and let's get started. Okay, so let's go for a really simple example today. I've got Power Apps open and I'm just gonna go for a tablet layout canvas app. And um, let me grab an icon. I'm just gonna grab a rectangle. And let us also put a control down. I'm just going to choose a drop down. So, like I said in my intro, this is just a really simple concept I'm displaying here, but you'll be able to take this concept and apply this same methodology throughout your entire application. I'm just going to bake some items in here. I'm going to call, I'm going to, first one I'm going to say green. Next item will be blue. Black. Let's see, yellow. Alright, so if we run that, see our drop down has got those four values as the values that we can choose from. Now, in our, now this is what I meant um, in the intro about it sort of being back to front to what, how you would normally approach a, um, if you were normally writing a program to do this or you were building something say in JavaScript, the event would be driven by the uh, by the drop down and um, in power apps it's sort of the um, reverse. So with this particular what I'm what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have this drop down change when I change the color on the drop down I want the box here to change to the color that is inside of the that I've selected inside of the drop down box or the drop down control. Now with um, if I was normally writing this, I would probably, if, well, if I was creating this in something like JavaScript or C Sharp, I would be uh, writing a function or an event triggered from the, the, um, the on change on the dropdown. But in this case, because I want this to change to the color of that I'm selecting, I'm actually want to make the change or I want to insert the logic inside of the property, the color property of, or the color fill property of the, this box. And that's kind of the way that you have to think about things when you're implementing logic in Power Apps. So here I'm going to select the our box and I'm going to find the on fill, fill color here. So that is um, an RGBA color. So how about we just remove that and we simplify this even further, but this is where we want to implement our logic. So within the fill property, we want to do a check. And we do that by the key to all implementing logic in Power Apps is the if statement or the if function. So here we select if. So if, if and we are looking at the drop down one box. So if, so this is our logical test. So if drop down one, I'm gonna choose selected and the value is equal to, because it's a string that I'm looking at. If it's equal to green, then return the green value which is so green is just a um 
built in. I'm re referencing the color directly by just saying green. So that's going to return green, the color green, back to this fill property if that is green. Now I could have also gone RGBA and selected the color that way. But just for simplicity, I'm going to go green. Now, if it is, if it's blue, let's get back to the box. If it's blue, so I need to do the check again. If drop down one selected value is equal to blue. So I'm checking to see if the drop down box value is matched to blue, then I want to return back the color blue. So if it doesn't, if it's not, I want to also check, we had two more colors here, black. So drop down one. And I'll, I will format this once I've finished typing the statement out, I'll format it properly on the screen. We'll go through it sort of line by line so you understand whereabouts uh, all of these different logical tests are taking place with inside of the if statement. So if drop down one selected value equals, I think it was yellow was my other one, then return back yellow. Oh, there was black as well. And last one is drop down one selected value equals black. then return back black. That's, you can see that it's all, that logic statement is correct and it's already um, applying it to our, uh, to our um, box. So let's just run the program. We've got green selected. If we change this to blue, it goes blue. Change it to black, it goes black and yellow, yellow. So, let's go back to statement. So we select our box again. We just format this text. So in our if statement here, we've got our logical condition and then comma, because the function, let's call it a function because it really is a function. So our if function, the first parameter of, of our if function is our logical test. So we're looking at if is drop down one selected value is a selected value on the drop one, drop down one control equal to green? If it is, return back the green value. And remember this if function, we've, we've typed it or we've applied it to the fill property. Now we can, using this technique, we can do this across any property inside of Power Apps. But for this example, we're using the fill. So the first, First logical test is drop down one selected value equal to green. If it is, return green back. And that applies directly to fill. If we had said something like true, we would get an error because the fill property does not accept, is not a Boolean or does not handle true or false properties. It is looking for a color. So let's put green back. So if that equals to true, then return back that true. We will return back that value to the fill property. Now, if it's not equal to, it continues to execute the if statement and it goes down here. Now we could have just had a false property here. We could have said something like return black if it doesn't equal to green, but we've got multiple values inside of our dropdown. So, if this does not equal to true, we can do the test again. 
So rather than sort of writing an additional if statement nested, we can, uh, Power Apps allows us just to put our new, new logic condition in as a sort of a nested value here. So if this is not equal to green, then test the drop down value again. Is it blue? If it's blue, return back blue. If it isn't, check if it's green or check if it's yellow. If it is yellow, return yellow. And if it's black, return black. And that gives us our really simple implementation of logic. Now, the other thing I could do here, let's imp insert another control. Let's do a toggle. And in here, let's apply this to visible the visible property of our colored box. Now you can see the visible property is a Boolean value. It's either true or false. This thing is either visible or not visible. So our toggle is going to be perfect because our toggle returns a true or false value or it contains a true or false value. So in here, all I need to do is go toggle one value as its visible property. So if we run that, you can see I can't see the box anymore, but if I turn the box on, now we can see it. But you might say you didn't use an if statement for that. I didn't need to use an if statement because like I said, this is this contains a Boolean value. If I wanted to do um, another if statement to do a check, I could. If I drop down another drop down box, and in here for items, I'm going to have visible. And hidden. So they're just two string values. So we've got visible and hidden as possible combinations for that. So in here, instead of for our visible, instead of looking at toggle, I'm going to use if again. So if drop down two this time, selected value. Is equal to visible then return true because remember we're on the visible property of this box and that is a boolean value so I must return true or false back to it depending on my if statement or depending on the value that's inside of that drop down And if it doesn't equal visible, I know I've only got two different values here, so I don't need to put another now. I don't need to test to see if it's false, because if it's not true, I, if it's not visible, I know it's going to be hidden. So I just return false back. Let's check that. I go visible, and then I go hidden. So now we're hiding, hiding, hiding and showing controls based on other control values inside of our form. So the if statement can also be used um, for not just applying logic directly to controls on your form. You can do it for, you can insert an if effectively almost anywhere in your Power App. One of the um, most sort of useful ways to do, to do that would be in something like save button. So you could, you could have a, inside of your select here, you could, um, instead of just going patch and patching to your source, 
you could test different conditions. So just say if toggle one value equal to true, then you could patch something to SharePoint. Otherwise, you could patch something to SQL. So the if statement is super powerful and super versatile and effectively the number one way to apply logic with inside of your Power App application. Give my video a thumbs up if you appreciated it. And I guess even give it a thumbs down because apparently that also helps the channel. I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.